Hello. We'll give it a minute for everybody to start popping on. Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome to day four of Prep for Wave Week. Just checking that we are live everywhere. Okay, perfect. We are live on the right. page. Let's share it to the Facebook group. Okay, let's dig in. We'll just wait for everybody to come on in. Thank you so much, Emily, for being here today. I am super excited. Thank you. And thanks for handling all the tech stuff. I'm glad I don't have to, you know, be involved in that at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, I was I was explaining to a couple other people. It's very interesting kind of like being having that one woman show going on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. I'm excited to chat with you, of course. Yes, I think this is another really important conversation that needs to be had as we're getting ready for prep or as we're getting ready for wave season that it will be happening. Hopefully a good one. I've been having my fingers right. crossed. Um, and and kind of like the evidence of what's going on now is kind of proving that we should be having a pretty busy wave season. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, for those that don't know you, so who are you and what do you do with your business? Sure, sure. My name is Emily Matris, and I'm the founder of Bon Vivant Copy, which is a copywriting um, studio for travel professionals. So I pretty much exclusively work with travel advisors and tour operators, um, and I primarily focus on helping you write better website copy, emails, and like opt-in offers. So if like you feel stuck with your marketing and writing in particular, I'm here to help. So that's 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 what I do in a nutshell. But I've been blessed to work within the travel industry for gosh, seven, eight, nine years now. Um, and that makes my job extra fun. That, I just have to pop this up. Erin Smith, Emily is a rock star <laughs> copywriter. Hi, Erin. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that I have to uh, echo that sentiment because when we worked together for my rebrand, I got the copy back and I seriously was like, I don't know how she got the words <laughs> that I was feeling <laughs> out because it's very hard for me to talk about myself and what I do for my, my clients and in my business. So. Yeah. And it, yeah, it's true. It is really hard to write about yourself because you have to you have to brag about yourself essentially. And I know a lot of, you know, travel advisors struggle with that. And that's exactly what, you know, a copywriter like me is here for, for sure. Mm -hmm. Yes. Awesome. So when we're looking about updating bios, profiles, web copy, what are some reasons someone would need to update that information? Sure. I'd say the biggest reason you would want to revisit your copy, your bios is if you're, target market has evolved, right? Mm -hmm. Let's say, I see this really often with travel advisors who start as more generalists, right? They sort of do anything for anybody. It's really common to start that way. But as they, um, you know, get business under their belt, they decide, okay, I am going to specialize in this type of travel. I'm going to specialize in cruises, for example. Or maybe they say, okay, I'm going to do lots of different types of travel, but I'm only going to work with families, right? Once you you know, focus on a particular specialty or a particular target market, you have to update your copy so that you start to attract that particular, you know, type of traveler or that particular, right. you know, market, right? So that would be, I, I'd say, the biggest reason why you should revisit your copy. As your, as your business evolves and you hone in, um, make sure your copy, your bios, your, your social media profiles reflect that new focus. Does that make sense? Yes, yes. And that kind of segues okay. into what sort of strategies should people be having when they're thinking about kind of what words they need to put out? Because copy, if you didn't know, equals words. Um, <laughs> I, I specifically mean with, I see so many times, like when I'm looking at other people's profiles, like, I'm Rita and I plan cruises because it's so much more stress free for you. And I mm -hmm, feel like mm -hmm. that, that doesn't talk anything to the client. It kind of like identifies who you are, what you do. But mm -hmm. uh, like I was talking to some people in study hall, it's not sexy. <laughs> it doesn't, it's want not. To, it doesn't attract me to you. <laughs> right. Yeah. That thing about, I think it is important to, you know, like the stress-free angle, pretty much every travel advisor can say that because 
all travel advisors make travel more stress-free for their mm -hmm. clients. Um, but I think you really need to dig deeper and, and find out the bigger why for your clients, right? So you, like you said, a lot of travel advisors already do pretty well in terms of saying, you know, um, what they do and who they do it for, but you need to dig a little bit deeper and figure out, okay, but why are my clients taking these types of vacations and why are they seeking my help? And mm -hmm. so it's not just about creating a stress-free experience. It might be about um, creating time, you know, in their busy lives, their busy schedules to finally reconnect with their own families. I know that's a big one. It could be creating, um, you know, honestly, like bucket list experiences for folks who, I don't know, are concerned about their own mortality. Obviously, don't say that in the copy <laughs> that, that same way, but that's that's like a bigger, deeper motivator. I've right. talked with um, travel advisors who have told me that their clients are really motivated um, by, um, they want to make their friends jealous, right? They want to take these really incredible types of vacations that, um, yeah, make their own friends jealous. So that's a motivation. So I think you need to, figure out what's motivating your clients and then speak to that motivation in your copy. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. Awesome. I, yeah. I really love that. And what some of the words that you were picking up on, I was like, Oh yes, yes. Like it, it gives that fire in your belly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So yeah. Um, it, sorry, go ahead. No, 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 go, go. What was I going to say? I was going to say it, it is important to be to the point and clear, I would say mm -hmm. at the beginning of your bio. So like you said, it might say something like, hi, I'm Rita and I create stress-free cruise experiences, right? I don't think that's necessarily a bad way to start. There's probably a, a better, more exciting way to put it. But I do mm -hmm. like the clarity there that you're naming right up front what your specialty is. But mm -hmm. after that opener, that's when you have the opportunity to, to dig deeper. So one piece of advice I would have for agents, especially when they are retooling their bios, aka like that, the, the short versions of their story, mm -hmm. 100, 200 words, make sure the first couple of lines, the first line especially, immediate, immediately identifies who you are, what you do, and who you serve. And then you go deeper in the rest of the bio. Okay. Awesome. Uh, and yeah. that's, I, that's where I wanted to kind of like go to is when we're thinking of bios, where do we have our bios? Where do mm -hmm. we have profiles set up? Like what are, what are the areas that we should be looking? Okay. This needs to be looked at. This needs to be looked at. Yeah. That's a good question. So let me think about, so when I use the word bio, I am meaning that that short blurb that you would probably probably be put, putting on like LinkedIn, for example, um, your consortia website might have a place for you to put your bio. If you um, send out an e-newsletter, often you'll have the bio at the bottom of the e-newsletter. And you always want to make sure you, you don't forget to update that one as well. And also, you, you typically have a media bio ready to send out to folks for like media opportunities. So Rita, when you invited me to speak, I think you asked for my bio, right? That's mm -hmm. the short version. Yeah. So those are by that's what I call bios, right? And obviously any other social media pro profiles where you can put that. Um, I want to differentiate between your bio and your about page. Um, often folks will come to me and say, hey, I, I want a new bio. But then I get on the phone to, to talk with them. And what they're really looking for is a new about page. And that's different because on your about page, you have an opportunity to go a lot deeper. And you have to think of your about page in context with the rest of your website, right? You have you typically have more control over your about page in terms of how long it can be. Mm -hmm. I encourage folks to think beyond the 100, 200 words limit. Um, you're, you can go a lot deeper on your about page. You can tell your story in full. You can have fun. And you can also like entertain your readers in a way that you can't when you're stuck to that 100 word count with the bio. So right. your bio is sort of like, you know, your really brief elevator speech, the point of a bio is to typically get people to um, check you out further. So maybe you have your bio on like your consortia website or consortia directory, but then you link to your website, right? So you're sending folks elsewhere. Um, mm -hmm. Whereas your about page works in conjunction with the messaging that's on your existing website, it tells a story, it entertains, and it creates a really strong emotional connection with your reader that encourages them to take the the big step to actually reach out to you. So I just wanted to like, you know, talk about that differentiation a little bit. Yeah, yeah, I have I have another amazing comment for you. Emily is the best from Alex. Zeiss Hi, Alex. 
Uh, going along with that, if people only have the bandwidth to maybe like update one, like they only have the mm-hmm. time, the money, the energy to do one, where yeah. is kind of like the most important place that they should be updating? I'm going to say it depends. It depends okay. on how they are using their marketing, how they're mm-hmm. operating their, their marketing. And what I mean by that is, do you mainly like, is your main goal to send prospects to your website? Are you focused on, you know, increasing your website um, traffic because you are using your website as like your main marketing tool? Mm -hmm. Or have you like sort of like put your website to the side and you're mainly focused on getting referrals um, from social media, for example? Mm -hmm. There's no like right or wrong answer on which bio um, platform you should focus on. It's the, it's the platform that you, utilize the most, right? So if you're more focused on getting folks in from Instagram and Facebook, obviously update those bios first. Um, Mm -hmm. But if you're, if you're more focused on um, increasing traffic to your website, you know, maybe retool your about page first. Um, The good news is when you're working on your bio, the short version, um, typically you can reuse it in lots of different places, right? So Mm -hmm. if you update your bio for Facebook, you could probably reuse that at, at the end of your e-newsletter, for example, you can reuse it um, on your consortium was website. You can probably retool it a little bit and use it on LinkedIn. So mm-hmm. um, when it comes to the bio, once you update it in one place, just copy and paste it and make just a few tweaks if you need to and, and post it everywhere else. Make it easier. Yes. Make it easier. You know, <laughs> do it one place and then and then you're good to go. Right, right. And kind of working in those bios, the thought just came to me about SEO and keywords. Mm-hmm. And I've always been curious, like, how do we input certain keywords without saying so like my specialty is cruise retreats. So yeah. how do we input whatever our own niched keyword in without saying cruise retreats are awesome. Cruise retreats are amazing. Cruise are cru- like are repeating it so many. Yeah, times. that's a really good question. And the good news is that Google and search engines are so, so smart these days that you do not have to keyword stuff um, in order to get that, get that traffic for your keyword. Google right. is smart enough to like, read the context of your bio of your web page and figure out you know what you are um, who you're trying to attract and what exactly you do so gone are the days where you have to reuse the same exact phrase even if it's not like grammatically correct over and over and over again in your copy okay. um, and so my recommendation when it comes to thinking through keywords is um, put on your ideal client hat think like your ideal client, what are they coming to the computer to actually search for? So Mm -hmm. if they are using the term cruise retreat, make sure you're putting that in your copy. But maybe they're searching for for something else, right? Um, Because they don't know the term cruise retreat. I'm trying to think of a better example about... um, Maybe destination weddings or family travel. Yeah, yeah. So like, I know that sometimes um, when I'm working with clients, they do multi-generational family travel. And so one thing you got to think about is, okay, when your client is searching, are they really going to be typing in the phrase multi-generational family travel? I think a lot of the times they're not using that multi-gen phrase. So Mm -hmm. you might need to think about, you know, what other ways can you describe that type of travel that um, will make sense to your client? Okay. So always put on your ideal client hat when you're, when you're thinking through the keyword thing, but you do not have to keyword stuff these days. Put it in once and then just write naturally. Um, Write for people first and Google second. I love that. That is really great to know. I think that kind of like, for me at least, is kind of like, okay, all right. (laughs) Yes, it's it's easier today for sure. Yeah, yeah. What are some trends that you're noticing either in the clients that you're working with or the copywriting world that... Uh, we should probably be picking up on like little little hints to sprinkle in the copy that we're writing. Hmm, that's a good one. So um, I think trends in the world of travel in terms of, you know, ways you might want to update your copy. Let's talk about the pandemic, right? Um, now more than ever, clients are seeking more support, more reassurance, more guidance. They're they're nervous, right? They're mm-hmm. nervous about traveling. They're nervous about losing their vacation 
allocation and investment if you know things get canceled or, or change at the last minute. I think it's really, really smart for travel advisors to take a look at their existing copy, their existing bios to see if it is speaking to this new sort of fear or uncertainty around travel. Make mm -hmm. sure your copy is um, doing its best to address and assuage those those fears or new worries on the parts of your clients. And this this probably makes more sense perhaps like on your services page than like, you know, in a bio or something. But but okay. make sure that you're saying something to the effect of, um, you know, we are here to guide you through, you know, un travel uncertainty. We are, you know, and it depends on how much support like an individual travel advisor is willing to provide. But you can talk about handholding. You can talk about the specific things you will do for your client as it relates to um, the pandemic or travel during COVID or just in general, like how much support you offer your client um, before, during, during and after travel. So get really specific about the things they can expect um, you to do for them to protect their vacation investment and provide like ultimate peace of mind. Does that make sense? I, I love that because there was a conversation in one of the groups I was in yesterday and I think that that has been a worry with quite a few travel advisors is how do I put myself out there knowing that X, Y, Z could happen or that it's happened to me that I have had to live through this. How do I put myself out there? And so kind of like what you were saying, reframe that and know that mm -hmm. they need to know that you are going to be there for, for them regardless of what happens. Right, exactly. And that support might look like um, guiding them on the right travel insurance to invest in, you know, mm -hmm. um, or, you know, guiding them through which tests to take or that kind of thing in preparation for travel. Um, I think it pays to be, I think it, I think it's smart for travel advisors to not pretend that travel's weird right now, right? Like don't pretend right. it's normal right now when it's not because your clients know it's not normal and they have, mm -hmm. um, more fears and more worries than they used to when it comes to travel. So speak to that. And you know, if this pandemic passes at some point, um, you can retool your copy at that point to you know take away COVID specific um, references. You can always go back to your coffee copy. Don't be afraid to you know edit it. But speak to where your clients are at, their headspace, their worries, their fears right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I have, I have to put another really great comment from Carl. I highly recommend Emily's roadmap program. Thank you, Carl. I appreciate that. <laughs> so Can just real quick, that's, that's a, um, I created a, a copywriting course for travel advisors who it's, you know, if, I, I can work one on one with travel advisors, you can hire me to write your copy. But mm -hmm. if for whatever reason, whether it's a budget constraint, or you like to write yourself, you want to um, get more, um, you know, information on how to write an effective travel agent website. That's why I created the website roadmap program. It's closed right now, but yeah. get on my email list, and I'll eventually uh, send out more uh, information about that. Awesome. Thank you. That, that's how I first started working with Emily. That's so right. I, yeah. I highly recommend going on to that course too, especially if you're just getting started and you don't have the resources for that big investment to kind of like revamp everything. I think right. that's a, a really great in for the time being. Uh, mm -hmm. I want to open up questions to any advisors that are listening in. What questions do you have for Emily? Please pop them up in the chat and I will be sure to pop them up in here too. Um, where where are some places we might not be thinking that we do need to be updating some of our words? Mm. I think you, like the super short bios, like for, I'm thinking about Instagram, for example, right? It's only like one line long. So mm -hmm. you might not think it matters very much, but I think that makes it matter all the more. So going back to our conversation earlier, where I was talking about, you need to immediately, immediately identify who you are and what you do. Mm -hmm. Check that Instagram bio, because that's basically all you have room for. If you, ha if your business has evolved and you're now focused on a new type of travel, make sure that's mentioned in your Instagram bio. So if you're now a cruise specialist, put that in your Instagram bio. So I think Instagram is probably the one that, that lots of folks are overlooking just because it's so short. 
I'm trying okay. to think if there's other spots. Um, we talked about the e-newsletter. A lot of folks send out e-newsletters, which is great. So just make sure you're um, definitely re-looking at your e-newsletter bio at the bottom because I can guarantee you your clients are looking at it because you send it out, you know, hopefully every every week or every other week. Um, so there's definite eyeball, eyeballs on that copy all of the time. Um, yeah. And I yeah, go ahead. That was a really great tip. Um, mm -hmm. because I normally right now I just have them go to my about page, but I like what you said to have the bio actually at the footer of the mm -hmm. e newsletter. And then you can link to the longer about page from that bio. Okay. Um, and the other reason why it's really important to update your e newsletter bio is because a lot of times travel advisors, their e newsletter list is primarily comprised of past clients, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and so Sometimes your your past clients are the last to know when you make a change in your business or when you make a, a change in focus, right? And so um, a lot of a lot of times um, your own clients will be like, "Oh, I didn't know that you did this. I didn't know mm -hmm. that you provide this service or do this type of travel." So that's mm -hmm. why it's important to always make sure that bio in particular is updated, so you keep the people who really matter the most, your actual past clients, um, right. informed of what you're doing. Right. And I, I love that you say that because, again, it is so hard for us to talk about ourselves. Like I'm trying to rework a social media strategy. And I was like, really, you have to talk more about what you do <laughs> instead of yep. like trying to build that KLT, the no like trust. I was like, they have to know exactly what you do so that they can call you for those services. Yes, exactly. They, you know, if you don't tell them, they're not going to figure it out on their own. <laughs> yes. Yes, I popped mm -hmm. up your website because Eva, one of our good colleagues in, in the travel industry, she asked for it. So I'll pop that back up. But we do have a, another awesome question from Pam. What words or phrases are overdone and therefore to be avoided? For example, when I was at LinkedIn, ninja was the eye rolling term. Yeah, I can definitely see that. I think, and I'm guilty of this, Rita, because I think I just referred to you this way, but I think guru is another one of those words that is over overused. I think I just referred to you as like a cruise guru. Oh. So I need I need to like watch out for that. I think guru, I think um, for the travel industry in particular, there are certain um, like travel cliches, right? Like, you know, a breathtaking, like the word breathtaking, like a breathtaking sunset, a breathtaking view, a breathtaking vista. Why is it breathtaking? Like what about that sunset view or a vista takes your breath away, right? So I think mm -hmm. breathtaking is one I see a lot. Um, I'm trying to think. Um, I think I think that it's always like a it's also like an individual thing, right? We mm -hmm. all have those words we return to again and again and again. For me, it's the word awesome. I use awesome to describe <laughs> almost everything. Yeah. Um, so when you're writing your own copy, make sure you're going through and highlighting those words that you're reusing again and again and again. You mm -hmm. don't have to like X all of them out, but make sure you are um, creating a, a variety in your copy because variety is what's going to keep the attention span of your reader, right? So if I described everything as awesome on my own website, like people would check out really quickly. Um, so I think it's less about words or phrases that are overdone, but words or phrases that you overuse personally is something you have to um, look out for. I'm trying to think if there are other phrase, words or phrases that are overdone that travel advisors in particular use. I'm not sure if like travel advisors use ninja a lot, but I do know that they, they might use like the word guru. Um, mm -hmm. Expert. And then there, I was just about to say expert. Mm -hmm. And I was just about to say a lot of people use the word expert, but I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing okay. um, because it's not, it's not, it's really clear, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's a, it's a clear word as opposed to ninja. We're like ninja. You don't really know what that means in that context necessarily. But when you say the word expert, like I'm an expert in, you know, France, like I understand what that means. Um, right. So yeah, I think expert's one of those words that you absolutely can use to describe yourself. Just make sure you're not overusing it. It's the it's those cutesy words like ninja or like guru um, that are that are that are trends, like Pam said, um, or, or or was was trying to say that you need to watch out for because you know if they're trendy, that means they can um, you know eventually they'll they'll no longer be trendy. So you don't want to you know right. be caught still using them when no one's using them anymore. Right. 
Do you go to sources like thesaurus.com to kind of like find, because that's, I've been finding myself, I use the word awesome a lot. And when you said that, I was like, everything is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, thesaurus.com is open on my browser literally all of the time. Yes, I'm a professional copywriter, but even I need some help. Um, okay. So, yeah, don't be afraid to um, use resources designed to help you. Um, God, I, I would not be able to function without thesaurus.com, <laughs> which is a little <laughs> bit embarrassing to say. But if, if I, as a professional copywriter, use it, then you um, certainly have permission to use it as well. Um, yeah. Because it's a great, because sometimes you think of a word that's not quite what you mean, but it's close. Mm -hmm. And like thesaurus.com is a great way to like find that word that you're actually searching for. So it's not always about, you know, just simply making sure you're not overusing the same words. It's about finding the exact right word to express the exact sentiment you're going for. So definitely yeah. use, use the tools that, that you can to help you write better. I love that. And then when mm -hmm. people go to your website, what are some resources that are available to kind of like help or review or strategize? Sure. So I definitely have a lot of a lot of blog posts all about copywriting for a travel pro. So definitely look through the, the blogs. Um, and I think if you just like look, look in certain places or stay on my website long enough, you'll eventually be pre presented with some um, some opt in offers. So I think I have some about, you know, a, a website writing checklist, things you need to make sure you are um, always including on your travel agent website. I think if you check out my about page at the bottom, you will be um, invited to join my blog brainstorming challenge. So I have like a an email series where every day for like 10 or 15 days, I send you a new blog topic idea. That's really good for folks who are like, oh, my God, I don't know what to write about this week. Um, so it's designed to help you come up with like 52 different like blog ideas, one for like every week of the year or something like that. Um, but yeah, definitely poke around. And then if you find your way to my Facebook page, it's just Bon Vivant Copy. No, wait, it's facebook.com slash Bon Vivant Copy. I'll be honest, mm -hmm. I haven't updated it recently. But if you go to the videos tab, um, mm -hmm. last summer, I did a ton of um, website reviews. So live website reviews, I would pull up a, a travel agent's website, someone who volunteered, and then I'd actually go through it um, and say, okay, here's what I think is working well. Here's what I think you can change. And I know that was valuable for a lot of folks because we mm -hmm. learn so much better by example, right? I can mm -hmm. sit here and talk to you all day long about how to write better copy. But when you actually see me, you know, critiquing um, actual copy, uh, then I think it, it clicks for a lot more people. So um, that I, I know has been helpful to to folks in the past. Awesome. Yeah, no. And it's always fun, even if you're not critiquing our own personal website, mm -hmm. that we can see other people's websites and kind of like garner a couple of ideas that we can we can utilize. Right, right, right. Because when I say critique, I don't mean it's all like, a, you need to do this better. It's also saying, okay, look how well this person executed yeah. this copywriting concept. So you can definitely um, get some ideas there. Yes. Mimi has a question. How often should we, should we review our website copy? I think, you know, it depends on how often you're changing your business, right? But I think if if you're the type of person who who like even as like a self-employed solopreneur has like an end of the year business review, I know I do that. That would be a good a good time to say, okay, let me just review my like marketing assets, right? So when you're going over your financials, when you're making a marketing plan for the next year, go ahead and also pull up your website and just scan through and say like, okay, all of this is still relevant or, you know, okay, I need to update this. So okay. minimum, look at that once a year when you're like creating a marketing plan for the upcoming year. But um, beyond that, like I was saying earlier, make sure you're updating your website when you become clear ab about, you know, um, a new focus or a new direction you're going in, in terms of the type of travel you plan or who you serve. So that might come before the end of your review, if that makes sense. Yeah, 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 love it. What do you have on the horizon with Bon Vivant Copy? Anything that we should stay tuned or any hot dates? Um, <laughs> No. So I say no. I say no because um as you know, Rita, I just came off of a five-week sabbatical where I took a big break um as I traveled through Europe. Highly recommend for anyone who can swing that. Um so right now I'm just getting back into the swing of things. So um I'm focusing on 
you know, serving my one-on-one -on -one clients right now. I have a lot of website copy projects coming up that I'm super excited about because it turns out when you take a big long break, you come back to work way more excited and, um, you know, creative in your thinking. So I'm really um, excited to just be working with my clients again after that break. I think uh, I, I mentioned my my website roadmap corp I, course. I don't have immediate plans to open that back up again. Um, but that might be something I bring back early next year. So if you're interested in that, if you go to my website under the shop tab, I believe you'll find a wait list for that. So stay tuned. Um, otherwise, it's just about, you know, turning out some really good copy, something I, you know, haven't done for, for over a month that I'm excited about. Awesome. Wonderful. Wonderful. So everyone, please, I have the website here here. <laughs> um, so please check that out. Get on Emily's list. She does provide some really great tangible advice every week when she does send out her emails. Um, and, and you will be updated on things like when she does take a sabbatical. Emily, thank you so, so much for being on today and sharing so much information. Yeah, as always, uh, it's a pleasure to chat with you, Rita. Thanks for inviting me on. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. If you have study hall pass, I will be on in just a few minutes to see you there at study hall. And then this afternoon, we have our 3 p.m. session building relationships with Aileen Blanco and Margie Jordan. So I'm looking forward to that. And I'll see you here this afternoon. Have a great couple of hours until I see you next time. Bye.